I'm Daryl Treffert, a uh, psychiatrist in Wisconsin, associated with the Wisconsin Medical Society on the uh, Savant Syndrome Project, situation okay. where somebody with a developmental disability like autism has this, what I call, island of genius, mm -hmm. and uh, began to do some work uh, uh, then, which was, as I said, way back in 1962. And so I have... Uh, known many uh, savants, uh, had the privilege of knowing them and their families, and uh, about half of the savants that I work with are autistic, okay. and the other half are have some other uh, develop, uh, developmental disability or uh, uh, central nervous system dysfunction. The thing that's interesting about autism, particularly, is that about one in, auto, one in, in ten autistic youngsters has some island of genius or remarkable wow. And that's that's much higher than in these other disabilities, where it's about one in two thousand. So, okay. so uh, I have had this special interest in autism and savant syndrome for for many years. Now it's interesting that uh, the savant skills that one sees, you know, savant syndrome was described back in eighteen eighty seven. So it is at one hundred and twenty five years ago, or whatever. Okay. Years ago, and it's it's remarkable that. Since that time, there of course have been many cases reported, but but uh, all of them kind of narrow down to five uh, special abilities: art, okay. music, calendar calculating, mm -hmm. I call lightning calculating, or ability in math, and visual spatial skills. Okay. Now, those tend to be right hemisphere skills mm -hmm. compared to left hemisphere skills. The left hemisphere is logical, sequential thinking and language, whereas the right hemisphere uh, is more associated with the, the kinds of thing, uh, abilities that savants have. And it's interesting that uh, many studies with with autistic youngsters show left hemisphere disability. Okay. And so it's not surprising then that you would see savant syndrome more often in autism that already has a left hemisphere dysfunction Okay. To these other disabilities. And that, that accounts for that, uh, uh, the reason. And uh, one out of, um, about one out of eight savants is female, which means about uh, eight out of uh, them are, uh, are, are the ratio of uh, eight to one uh, males compared okay. to females. Hmm. And that has to do also with left hemisphere uh, dysfunction. Uh, the same, that same, Male sex incidence is noted in uh, uh, in, in language disabilities, uh, in autism, and in stuttering, for example. Mm -hmm. and to, uh, the reason for that discrepancy between the male and, and female, not only in in uh, Savant syndrome but in autism itself, mm -hmm. uh, uh, is that uh, all of us uh, uh, in our development, uh, the left hemisphere completes its development later than the right hemisphere okay. in, in, the, in the fetus, which means that the left hemisphere is exposed for a longer period of time to anything that might be detrimental to it. It turns out that testosterone, the male sex hormone, reaches very high levels in the fetus when he is developing his secondary sexual characteristics, and it, since the left hemisphere is still more vulnerable, mm -hmm. it affects the left hemisphere more than uh, in males because of the testosterone. So that accounts for the higher incidence of males in autism as well as in savant syndrome. And that, again, gets us into the, the impl implication of the left hemisphere in this whole issue of uh, autism and savant syndrome. Regardless of what the skill, whether it's art or music or this math skill, mm -hmm. um, it really... Uh, in the past, it's sort of been looked at as, oh, gee whiz, look at that, isn't that remarkable, you know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of a, a freakish sort of ability, and then we get, go back to our more normal kinds of uh, concerns. But it is not a, a, a frivolous skill. It's it's not just something incidental, or gee whiz, look at that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the language of, of these youngsters. Uh, they, they speak through their art. They speak through their music. Or... Uh, even in math and calendar calculating, it, it, it becomes their language, their link to the world. Mm -hmm. What I've noticed is that, and, and it, it's what I, what I call a, a, a conduit toward independence. In other words, 
as the child uses, let's say, his art ability, mm -hmm. it is not just uh, the art not only gets better and, and more interesting, but so does the language and so okay. does the skills and uh, a, a growth toward independence. So that the skill becomes what I call conduit toward independence. And so my tack with these people is to what I call train the talent. You know, okay. whatever the talent, mm -hmm. take it and run with it. Because it's not only going to increase their uh, ability musically or, or artistically, but with that comes better language, better socialization, mm -hmm. and more independence. The other thing that I noticed with uh, uh, with musicians and artists uh, is that there's sort of a, a transition. I, I've had the opportunity to follow some of these people now for you know 20 or 25 years, and yeah. so um, and and there's kind of a, an interesting transition that occurs because many times with musicians, let's say the musical savant, they start by being able to replicate a piece that they've heard. And many times they'll, they'll startle their parents at age two or three because they were listening to something in the radio in the car, and they go home and the little child goes to this toy piano and it's playing the piece. And so um, playing it back, and so the ability to hear it once and play it back becomes mm -hmm. striking. But over time, as the child does that musical thing, they get a little bit bored and they begin then to improvise. And, and mm. not just play back what they've heard, but they begin to improvise. And, 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 and then finally, over time, they actually begin to create something new. Okay. So this from, there is this replication to improvisation uh, to uh, a creation. And I've seen that in artists. Uh, Stephen Wilshire, for example, who's uh, the, the autistic lad who can fly above a city for 20 minutes and then spend the next three days drawing it. Yeah. <laughs> Window by window and brick mm -hmm. by. Um, he uh, a couple of years ago he he did this uh, over in New York City, mm -hmm. and I was involved with that program um, talking about Stephen Wilshire. And anyway, he told me, uh, Doctor Trevor, he said that's the last one of these that I'm going to do. And I wow. said, call me. He said I'm bored. He said, but it turns out he wasn't that bored. He's done about six cities since, but. <laughs> But, but but what he did was uh, it, his artwork was originally just taking a, a building and, 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 and recreating it exactly. Uh, but over time, he began then to improvise in the drawing. So there might be a telephone wire here or, or t take a telephone wire out. And now actually he's doing some human uh, forms and, uh, mm -hmm. and some of its own um, creativity activity, not just the replication. But he's a good example of somebody that has come so far. His, his, he was, when he was an autistic, he was mute, uh, he was uh, uh, hyperactive, he was, uh, wow. but one day in the classroom he said, paper. And some teacher was smart enough to go get a piece of paper and give him pencils and, and away he went. And, and from that time, now he has his own gallery. Mm -hmm. Uh, lives quite independently and is able to interact with people and so forth. His language has improved. So these skills are are vital uh, as a, a, a tool toward independence. And, and so when I and and no matter how no matter how severe uh, an autistic child might appear to be or how withdrawn or inaccessible, there's always what I call it island of intactness in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Our task is to find that island of intactness and then to water it and flourish it and you know to fertilize it and, and pretty soon it grows. So these um, it's a real tool uh, toward uh, uh, treatment and, and uh, I've seen some remarkable results uh, training the talent. Okay.